recognition of the uh, the impact uh, residential schools has had on our Indigenous communities and uh, the continuous impact on our Indigenous communities. And uh, we, uh, we certainly will be uh, recognizing that tomorrow more formally, but uh, we're close and I just wanted to point that out. I think it's important that teacher candidates are aware that uh, not all students come to your classroom with the same um, privileges and opportunities as others. And uh, as teachers, you have to be aware of that and you have to um, do your best to uh, support all learners as they, as, as they move through their journey. Um, a little bit about me. I, I mentioned I teach at Northern Secondary School, which was also the school I attended, which is somewhat unique, I suppose, and not new unique, but uh, not as common. Uh, most teachers don't teach at their former uh, high school. Uh, but uh, I do teach at a relatively small high school in a small community. And so actually much of our staff is uh, uh, former students from the school. So it, it's an interesting uh, dynamic, um, being the person with the key after all those years of uh, uh, being on the other side of the, uh, of the desk. And uh, so that, that's an interesting experience. Um, I, I teach, I have taught and teach uh, special education, social sciences, uh, some phys ed, um, coached numerous sports, uh, football and soccer, track and field, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed all those uh, opportunities and those experiences. Um, I have three children myself, they're all young adults, so like probably most of the people on the, on the um, Zoom meeting today. Uh, my son Dylan's uh, 23, my daughter Olivia's uh, 22, and my youngest son's uh, 20. So they are uh, on their adult adventure now and, and uh, doing well, and, and uh, I certainly uh, enjoy watching them uh, grow into their, uh, their new lives. Um, my wife Sandra is holding down the home fort in, in Sturgeon Falls and, uh, and um, adjusting to life without me there and vice versa. I'm adjusting to life without her uh, with me. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, you are entering the greatest profession out there, a profession that will impact uh, students and your community and the, the greater society for years to come beyond beyond your own lifetime, beyond many of your students' lifetime. You, you will impact uh, how things go and uh, that that may seem like a tremendous responsibility and it is but it's also a, a tremendous privilege and I hope I hope you recognize that as you uh, start your journey into uh, teacher uh, education in the teaching profession. Um, all right Lindy I'll get you to put up some slides for us so they don't have to look at the, my goofy face too much. So this beautiful picture doesn't look much like a classroom, and it isn't. It, it is the OTF campground. We actually own uh, 1,200 acres, which uh, also includes uh, this lake uh, within the boundaries uh, in uh, just uh, east of Perry Sound in Dunchurch, Ontario. Beautiful facility that all teacher members across the province can access uh, for some rest and uh, rejuvenation. And uh, certainly if you have an opportunity to go there, it's a beautiful site and uh, provides uh, a little touch of nature for, uh, for our chaotic lives to hopefully uh, calm, our, uh, calm our nerves. So uh, I was there last week and had a great experience there. So we, got, we have this duck looking kind of apprehensive about jumping in the water and, and you are, uh, you are um, that's representing young teachers, teacher candidates as they uh, embark on this uh, uh, journey. And uh, it, it, is, it is a bit of a, a nervous adventure at the beginning, but uh, if you take the plunge and uh, enjoy uh, the experience and, and take everything in that you can, uh, you will have a wonderful time in education. <clears throat> we are in some challenging times these days, but uh, the rewards are tremendous. Uh, I see lots of you uh, <laughs> answering our poll before we even uh, uh, put I'm it up going, there. I'm the going to launch it now. I, can't, I don't know how <laughs> yeah. they're answering. They're answering in the, in the chat box. So hold on, here it goes. I'll launch yeah. the poll. 
We're going to actually have a poll here so we can look at the results afterwards, but uh, we appreciate your enthusiasm with uh, putting your answers in the in the box. So what we are asking you, what do you know about OTF or the Ontario Teachers Federation? And uh, I'm just waiting a little longer and I would say I'm going to end this poll in about five seconds. Okay. So five, four, there's still people voting, so three. Oh, I think we've got it. Two, one. Okay, let's share the results. There you go. All Carl, right. You so, um, yeah, that, this is uh, this is wonderful. We last uh, last couple of presentations we did, we had to sort of uh, judge what we saw in the chat box, but this gives us a little bit more of a concrete impression of people's knowledge on this subject. So, uh, the Ontario Teachers Federation. Uh, it looks like uh, many of you have heard of us, um, and uh, that's important. But uh, we hope today. Uh, through our presentation to expand your knowledge and, and hopefully move you up to uh, level three or level four in your knowledge of the Ontario Teachers Federation. So uh, what is the OTF? Well, our objects are on the screen there. I'm not gonna read through them specifically, um, but generally they can be um, distilled down to two basic goals. Uh, we advoc advocate and defend public education in Ontario and we safeguard and advance the teaching profession in Ontario. And uh, we, we have approximately 165,000 members and they include all teachers in Ontario, which well, I'll get to in the next slide here. <clears throat> so you see, you see this wonderful picture. Um, you think maybe that's just a uh, stock uh, image from some fancy photographer, but it is not. That is the garden behind, uh, behind my office here in the spring. So it's a nice, uh, nice uh, courtyard we have. Anyway, um, so who are the members of uh, the Ontario Teachers Federation? All full-time, part-time, and occasional teachers in uh, Ontario's publicly funded education system, as well all teacher candidates in the faculties of education across the province are associate members. So uh, you, as, <clears throat> as in your what are we, third week maybe of uh, uh, teacher education are an associate member of uh, OTF. And I, I saw a chat box question when we had the campground picture up there, can students uh, access the campground? And I believe so, uh, that you, you could access the campground, although we are, I, I believe it closes just after the Thanksgiving day uh, or Thanksgiving weekend. So you'll have to hurry. All right, Lindy, maybe we can jump to the next one. <clears throat> so our, our Ontario Teachers Federation is uh, made up of four of um, teacher federations, affiliate members, we call them the affiliates. Um, AEFO, so AEFO is a uh, French first language teachers in the province from kindergarten to grade 12. The Ontario English Catholic Teachers Association or OECTA is uh, they represent all um, English speaking Catholic teachers from kindergarten to grade 12. ETFO, Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, uh, represents all um, elementary school teachers across the province in the English public system. And then uh, my federation is the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation, which represents uh, high school teachers in the public English public system. Uh, Parker, I'm going to just step in and say what's really important for them to realize is that it really depends on who hires you. That's how your membership gets determined, right? So if you happen to be hired by an elementary English public school, then you would automatically become a member of ETFO. Um, so I'm going to let you quiz them on this a little bit in the next slide, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that the way it, you, you decide, it's not like you really decide, but it gets decided which of these you are a member of, depends on who hires you. And in all cases, you're also always a member of OTF as well as one of these um, organizations. Yeah, thanks, Lindy. And so this is part of the Education Act, the legislation. And uh, so that is determined by your, uh, your employer school board. Uh, so we got a pop quiz here, which federation uh, 
would you belong to if? And uh, so we want uh, you to match the acronym OTF and OCT with A or B. So A, which organization license governs and regulates Ontario's teaching profession in the public interest? And then B, which organization represents the voice of all teachers employed in Ontario's publicly funded school system and advocates on the teaching, behalf of the teaching profession? And we, we don't have a poll for this one, right, Lindy? People, we just want people to put the answer in the chat right. box. Right, and I actually, I've actually been watching who put that in first, and uh, I think Sarah Camus, or Camus, I don't know how she pronounces her last name, was the first person to give us the right answer. And we have a prize for her, do we not? We do, we do. <laughs> I'm going to show a little t-shirt that we have, and we have two more that we're going to give away in the space of this presentation. Um, but um, Sarah was actually the first one to give us the uh, the right answer there. So, so uh, did you want to need... check? Did you want to check too if they would know which affiliate they would belong to if they were hired in a certain school system? Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll continue with our pop quiz here. It looks like uh, we've gotten a, a very uh, strong result in our our quiz on the screen. But uh, let me just uh, do a verbal uh, verbal test. For, so in the chat box, if you were a member, if you were hired by a um, French Catholic school board, what federation would you belong to? French Catholic. And it looks like we're getting the right answer there. AEFO represents all French first language uh, uh, educators in the province. Um, Okay, next one. People are doing well there. Uh, next one, if you were hired in uh, a uh, public English high school in Ontario. Ooh, they're that. on the ball. <laughs> they're fast too. <laughs> they're, not, uh, they're not confused about this at all. So I think yeah. it's done here. We can go home. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah. Go home. <laughs> we got high achievers uh, in this teacher, uh, teacher candidate group for sure. All right. Well, excellent. So um, we'll just ask that Sarah uh, uh, put her email address or contact Lindy Amato through the chat box or send her an email. Right. I will, I will put in my email address when we come to the end of this uh, little session. And then, Sarah, you'll need to send us a mailing address and the size that you would like in the T-shirt. You'll see the T-shirt a little later on, and then we will send that to you. But there's still two more to give away, so. Yeah. All right. So with the um, current challenges in, uh, in education uh, this, this past year and, and this year as we're moving forward, uh, we tried to put in some uh, tranquil pictures. This is another uh, peaceful uh, nature picture here. Uh, I'm not sure where, I think Lindy uh, found this picture somewhere or she took this picture, I don't know, but uh, anyway. Um, so as associate, uh, what, what does it uh, mean for you to be an associate member of OTF? So OTF uh, is a reliable source of information for you. So the Ontario Teachers Federation and the four affiliate unions are uh, working on your behalf. Our, our mandate is to uh, uh, work for teachers across the province. And uh, the, the main, um, well, not the main, but one of the important roles we have is to uh, provide accurate and uh, relevant information for educators uh, throughout the uh, throughout the school year and and, and beyond. Um, but it's important that uh, you keep yourself informed. I, I know it's overwhelming with all the uh, goings on in education, in particular during these tough times. Uh, and certainly when you're uh, in a teacher education program, you are uh, flooded with uh, uh, information all the time. And, um, but it is important for you to uh, maintain uh, some knowledge of, of the events of things going on. And uh, OTF is an excellent source of information for that. And, and we'll put up uh, um, some our social media uh, handles and our website at the uh, near the end of the presentation and we'd certainly ask you to uh, uh, follow or, or link up to those uh, those sites and uh, we also ask that you, it's voluntary we also ask that you, you uh, register your email so that we can uh, share information with you uh, uh, 
uh, important information when need be. Um, but OTF does other things. We work with the faculties across the province uh, through the teacher education liaison committees uh, that were mentioned earlier and, and uh, in contact with the faculties from, from our office here in, in Toronto, uh, giving them feedback and giving them input on uh, what, what you need to uh, learn as uh, educa young educators to uh, be successful in, their, in your career. So um, that's an important role for us. Uh, OTF sort of is the thread throughout your career. I mean, we are here today as you begin your journey in education. And uh, I mean, one of our other roles is uh, as one of the partners in the on Ontario Teachers Pension Plan with the government of Ontario as the other partner. And so we're here at the beginning of your career. And uh, hopefully when you reach the end, we will also be there to uh, support you uh, uh, with a healthy pension so that you can uh, um, end your career and, uh, and enjoy uh, some uh, peaceful times uh, in retirement. Um, we also uh, meet with education stakeholders and lobby on your behalf. Uh, so different uh, uh, government agencies and, and stakeholders who uh, have influence and, and are decision makers in the education system in Ontario. Uh, we meet with them regular, regularly and uh, discuss the issues of the day and uh, present uh, feedback based on uh, um, what teachers uh, expect from, from the education system and what we need to be uh, successful in our, in our uh, daily uh, teaching profession. Uh, for example, last week I met with uh, the uh, chair of the uh, EQAO uh, and uh, we discussed uh, many things, including the uh, math proficiency test, which uh, uh, you are uh, required to take now as teacher candidates when you get to the uh, end of the second year. Um, I uh, expressed our uh, dislike of that test uh, again on your behalf, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see some adjustments, but uh, at this point, it's still one of the requirements of your, uh, of your uh, your path through uh, teacher education programs. Um, and then finally, well not finally, but uh, I mean we do many other things, professional development and, uh, and uh, the pension plan like I, met, I mentioned before, but uh, we want to emphasize to you the importance of the, the Fed Ontario Teachers Federation and the four affiliate uh, federations because they're working on your behalf. Uh, Many other education stakeholders, while they while they care about teachers and, and uh, want to be supportive of them, their role is not to look out for your interests, but they are they have other mandates. Uh, for example, the Ontario College of Teachers has mandated to look out for the public interest, and uh, and so you can always count on the federations to to be there to support uh, the teaching profession and, and you in that profession. So please keep that in mind. If, if you, we encourage you to be involved and if that involvement is just sort of staying informed, that's, that's great. But if you wanna take a little bit of a bigger step into involvement in the federations, you can start that as, uh, as um, teacher candidates um, by uh, looking into being part of the uh, Teacher Education Liaison Committee or the TELC Committee at uh, U of O. Um, uh, Amit Baines is the, Emrit Baines is the uh, chair this year. And um, I'm, I'm sure the TEL committee would welcome you with open arms. I was, I was a member of the TEL committee at Nipissing University in North Bay for many years, the chair for a couple of years, and, they, uh, and we're always looking for, for the, uh, the teacher candidate voice, the student voice, because you're in the experience and, and you know what's working and, and what you're frustrated with and uh, the, um, the interactions between the TELC committee, the members of the TELC committee, which include the, the faculty of education as well, are, um, are uh, critical to keeping the programs uh, vibrant. So uh, um, your voice is, is very important in that, in, that, um, in that discussion. So if you are interested, I saw Dwayne uh, Ferris, who is another member of uh, Ottawa's TELC committee, put up his uh, contact info in the chat box. So please, our, uh, Please um, contact him. There he is. And 
he will uh, he will guide you uh, through uh, what Ottawa Talc looks like. All right, Lindy, I think we are getting near your segment of the presentation. And so uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to Lindy and she's going to guide you through some of the other uh, aspects of the Ontario Teachers Federation. I'm always thrilled, Parker, that you let me do this part because we thought that what we'd do is just share with you guys a little bit of what you can access through us because we are at the current time, um, you know, representing you since you are our associate members. and. In fact, um, after I've shown you some of the fantastic things that you can access and what we do for you, I'll turn over back to Parker and he'll tell you what we expect from you. So I get to do the fun part and he gets to do the serious part. So for me, it works out very, very well. Um, I did want to also say that part of the reason that I love talking about these things and you know, sort of talking to you about the benefits of being involved in the Federation is that when I first graduated, there were zero jobs and I was actually not hired in the publicly funded school system. I ended up finding work in a private school. And when I did speak to colleagues who were hired in the public system, they would know so much about what was going on in the curriculum and what was going on in terms of liaising and networking with other teachers. And I would say to them, how on earth do you know all this information? They would say to me through the Federation. And the best story I can tell about this is my colleague from, um, the London area, she was um, a wonderful teacher who was chosen by the Canadian Teachers Federation because of her involvement in the Federation. She was chosen to do something that we call Project Overseas. And um, as a person going on Project Overseas, they sent her to, um, Project Overseas sends teachers to developing countries for the summer and you work with teachers there. And in her case, Marilyn's case, um, they sent her over to India. And while she was there, she met and worked with Mother Teresa. Now you can imagine her entire life was so changed by this opportunity to meet Mother Teresa. And I often say every day of working with the Federation does not feel like meeting Mother Teresa. Does it Parker? It's not like every day Mother Teresa is right there, right? <laughs> but that said, you will see that the more involved in the Federation you are, the more you will get out of your teaching. There's so much that you can learn. So um, without further ado, I'm going to show you some of the um, resources we have for you. Please keep in mind at the end, I will put all of the links into the chat box and you will be able to access all of these. We'll play a little game on the OTF website. All of these resources are available to you through the OTF website and they're all available to you for free. Okay, so here goes. Let's share the screen again. By the way, the little dogs in this picture belong to my assistant. So um, this is a, her brother's place up north. Okay, so first of all, we have this incredible website um, called the Teachers Gateway to Special Education. If you're looking for any information about special needs students, you will find it here. All kinds of definitions and advice about how to um, teach and assess students with special needs. Believe me, if there's a special need that you've not heard of before, like for example, my friend has a son who has Williams syndrome. I had never heard of Williams syndrome before. It's defined and explained here. And there are some great hints and tips for how to um, really uh, work with special needs students. We also have this incredible thing called the Curriculum Forum, which is a grouping of 50 plus subject and division associations. So if you happen to be somebody who's particularly interested in math, there's a math association. If you wanted to know more about teaching social, social sciences or, this, or um, really any subject you can think of, there's a drama association. Um, there are so many groups, including uh, one that's focused just on teaching junior education. Uh, there's one on teaching the gifted. So I really, really recommend that if you're interested in liaising with other teachers who have the same interests as yourselves, look for the OTF curriculum forum. And as I said, you can find this on the OTF website. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Um, Survive and Thrive is an awesome website that was created just for beginning teachers. And the page that I've chosen to illustrate here is one that looks at teacher well-being, which I think is really important for teacher candidates and also for all of our teachers. It's that balance between um, our, our well-being and the work that we do. Sometimes it's very stressful being a teacher. So Survive and Thrive is the place that you can find all kinds of resources and uh, useful information for you 
about classroom management, about assessment practices. So as I say, this was created specially for beginning teachers. So take a look at Survive and Thrive. Even if you have um, an assignment due, for example, on assessment practices, you might find some really interesting um, resources to support that here. Um, this one is safe at school and uh, it's one of my favorite ones. We focus here mostly on bullying prevention and we also focus on equity and inclusive education. And um, these are hands-on tips for how you can interrupt bullying. It's not just about describing bullying. It's really how can you, what are the steps you need to take to stop it from happening? Um, similarly, with equity and inclusive education, there's tons of stuff on the site that would really help guide you. So um, I, I really encourage you to look at Safe at School. Um, an entire website, and all of this is free to you guys, um, an entire website dedicated to parent engagement, including how you can work with parents to resolve conflicts, um, what is the interaction between teachers and other educators and parents in the contribution that parents can make to school life, to helping their students. Um, so really, an, again, a very, very strong website filled, filled, filled with practical hints and tips, as well as great resources on parent engagement. Um, we have something called OTF Connects, which is our series of webinars. Um, we are going to start offering them. They're live webinars by teachers for teachers. And we, we offer them through most years. We haven't yet begun this fall, but they will begin probably um, in the beginning of November. And we've planned even a series on um, mathematics for um, teacher candidates who might be interested in strengthening your math skills. There will be a series um, on OTF Connects. And these webinars are offered on mostly Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, but you should sign up and I'll show you where to sign up to get the information because we do offer them first come first serve and honestly Parker you've seen this happening they get filled up within a couple of hours so if you're interested in participating in them live you need to sign up to get the information so that you know when they become available <laughs> you can then participate yep, that's um, part of uh, staying informed you you get the opportunities if you're uh, paying attention to what the federations are doing Exactly. So, um, and they're free to teacher candidates because you are our associate members. So you're as eligible for them as our teachers are. So we really encourage you to, um, to sign up for the information that will let you know as they get released. Um, and as I say, they are by teachers for teachers. So they're very practical and hands on. But the other thing that you should know is that if you don't get into a session, they are all recorded and we have a searchable database of about 500 past webinars. You can always search them after they've happened and you can then look at them. So um, they are accessible to you. Um, we have an entire website on financial literacy. I think this is one of the largest single sources of supports and resources on financial literacy. So if you're interested in financial literacy, we have that available to you as well. And you see the URL is up on the screen, but don't worry, I will put that into the chat box for you. So you can just copy and paste all of these. And last but not least, we have something called Advantage. And Advantage is something that our teachers get that enables them to access all kinds of perks, discounts, just because of the fact that they are teachers. And you folks, because you are our associate members, are also allowed to become Advantage members. You see that it says they apply by October 31st, 2020. That deadline might be extended because we still have to get finalized the link that will allow you to sign up. So watch out in the coming weeks, you're going to get um, information about Advantage. And if you want to sign up, it's completely up to you. Um, it will enable you to get all these perks and access to different things. The card is also nice because it does allow you to identify yourself as a teacher. And the new cards that we're issuing this year, they come to us from the whole program is sponsored by the Ontario Teachers Insurance Plan. And those cards are going to be eligible for three whole years. So you will have them right through your time here at the faculty and beyond. So that's Advantage. And you will hear more information about that in the coming weeks. And you'll know how to sign up. I, I think we will push this uh, deadline at least into November. So don't panic. There will be time for you to sign up. So this is the T-shirt, the famous T-shirt that Sarah Camus or Sarah Camus. I'm sorry, I don't know how you say your last name, Sarah. Um, you will be getting this one and we're going to play a game now, um, Parker. 
um, on the OTF website, which will enable um, everybody really to uh, see if they can get a t-shirt. We are hoping that next year when you're back at campus, we will have a t-shirt for each and every one of you. So don't be disappointed if you don't manage to get it, but we're going to do a little scavenger hunt if that's okay with everybody. So let's, let's see. And I'm looking for, oh, Parker, you didn't remind me. I had almost forgotten to tell people that on the OTF website and not just on the OTF website, you can find us on Twitter and you can find us on Facebook. And the OTF president has his own Twitter handle and he is on a lot. So I recommend that you follow him. The other two are um, a general OTF Twitter handle and then an OTF PD, which stands for professional development. I will also show you in a moment how you can sign up on the OTF website to get the notifications that we keep telling you about. Um, but the OTF website, apart from all the resources that I've shown you, is an excellent place for you to find out information about what's going on in the province, what action are the teachers, uh, unions all taking on certain issues. And it's very important that you stay informed. So this is a place that you should go to the OTF website in order to get the, uh, the information, both the resources I just showed you, as well as the um, information about what's going on in the province and what's happening in the area of PD. So, so staying, staying informed is key, but also on a selfish note, I, I have a friendly competition going with the past president who can get the most uh, Twitter followers. So uh, on a selfish, uh, in a selfish vein, I ask you, please sign up for the OTF Prez uh, uh, Twitter account. But all the Twitter accounts are, are valuable sources of information and our Facebook page, as well as our website. And Lindy will lead you through the website here in, in a few moments. But uh, yeah, let, let's sign up, please, for all of those communication uh, networks. Okay, so here's the scavenger hunt. And here again, I'm going to be looking for the first people who give me the right URL link. So what you're going to want to do if your um, screen is in full screen, you want to, you're going to want to choose a screen uh, view that allows you to go into your own browser. And you should go to the OTF website, which is the URL you see under the scavenger hunt. By the way, this cat is not my cat, but it looks exactly like my cat. So go to otffeo.on.ca. And I'm looking for the person who can find on our website where the OTF Connects sessions are accessible from. So I'm just looking for somebody to uh, put into the uh, chat box, first person who puts into the chat box the URL for accessing the OTF Connects webinars. See if you can do that. Mm. Ha, ah, there you go, Michelle Walker. Well done. T-shirt for Michelle. Okay, she was fast. All right, are you ready for the next challenge? I'm looking for the first person. Oh, ah, that's funny, the website's not working. Oh, boo. I'm sorry. Well, let's see if anybody can get there right now. Boo, lots of people who it's not working for and they all want the t-shirt. Well, I know it's a little unfair because of the, uh, the technology not uh, doing its best for us, but let's try one last time, one last search. And what we will do is you will get crash. Everybody's crashing the site. Oh, Parker. Is it your fault that the technology is not working for us? Oh, probably. probably. <laughs> it's supposed to be very robust. It shouldn't crash. I'll have to send everyone a t-shirt. That's it. The train is saying send everybody a t-shirt. Um, okay. Well, let's do the following. I'm trying, to, I've got a better idea. A much more fair thing, Parker. Are you ready for this? Yep, I'm ready. Okay. First of all, let me just tell people when you go to the OTF website down at the bottom of the landing page, you will find a place where you can sign up both for our newsletter, our generalized newsletter and for our PD newsletter, sign up for both. All you need to give us is your uh, name and your email address. We don't send out too many things. You're not going to be bothered and you can always unsubscribe, but do that after we're done here since you not all of you can access the website right now, but 
make a note to yourselves to do that. And here is the question that is going to win the second t-shirt. I would like to know, since I didn't really do a, an inv an, any information about my background, Parker, who will be the first person do you think who could guess which country I was born in and why I have such a strange accent? Ha ha ha, I'm not seeing anybody getting it right. People, I'll tell you that the closest so far is South Africa, but I am not from South Africa. That's kind of like calling a Canadian an American. Uh, Botswana, Mozambique, oh, Rachel. Rachel got it. I am from Zimbabwe. Rachel Delaney, you are the proud winner. Well done. <laughs> yes, I am from Zimbabwe. You are the proud winner of the second, of the third t-shirt actually. So, Rachel, Michelle, and Sarah are all going to be in touch with me. There you go. I am indeed from Zimbabwe. Okay, so Parker, I'm going to hand over to you because I know you have some important information to tell them about. Now that I've told them all these great things that we have for them, including a website that crashed on us, um, I think you want to talk to them a little bit about what it is we expect from them since they are our associate members. Okay, yeah, thank you. I mean, so yes, all, all of the... Um, uh, opportunities available through the website and when there's not such a high volume of traffic I, I'm uh, positive it will work well for you but um, uh, all that information is is uh, great information developed by teachers and our professional staff here who are teachers uh, at OTF uh, for you and so so um, it, it's very worthwhile uh, information and professional development if you have an opportunity to have a look um, the, uh, but along with those great resources that we're providing you, uh, a benefit and the ad advantage uh, benefits and so on, uh, there are some responsibilities for teachers and so, as, well as, uh, as well as our associate, mem uh, associate teacher candidate members. And, uh, and so I'm just going to talk a little bit about that, um, but uh, always, always with uh, some privileges, there are some responsibilities. So uh, um, we're going to go through that a bit. So as associate members, you are subject to the same responsibilities as the regular full teacher members. And um, you need to uh, strive at all times to maintain the highest degree of professional competence. So you need to be upgrading your skills and, 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 and working, uh, working uh, to the best of your abilities at all times. And you need to hold, uphold the honor, dignity and ethical standards of the teaching profession. And, and uh, the Ontario College of Teachers lays out uh, um, some ethical standards that you need to follow. And, and, and we have our own um, uh, standards that we feel are, are critical to being a successful educator. And uh, uh, as a member of our organization, you are responsible to um, uh, continue to maintain those high degrees of uh, competence and uh, professionalism. So you have responsibilities to a few different stakeholders. You, uh, you have uh, uh, responsibilities to your students and uh, students are always at the core of what education is all, is all about. Um, uh, but you also have uh, uh, responsibilities to, to the, uh, the public in general terms as well as uh, other educational authorities and stakeholders. So the Ministry of Education, the College of Teachers, um, and, and so on, your school boards, when, once you're employed. Uh, you have responsibilities to the Federation, which we, uh, uh, we're talking about now. And you have uh, uh, responsibility to your fellow members of, of the Federation, your, your colleagues. And uh, we'll touch on that a little bit more in detail for each of those uh, stakeholders. So for students, you have to uh, maintain your professional competence and, and you're, you're working on that now. Uh, you all come with uh, um, a skill set, uh, you know, in a, in a particular subject area. You, you all have an undergraduate degree from uh, somewhere in, in, a, in a subject. And uh, now you're going to refine your knowledge that you've learned over, over your time getting your undergraduate degree and, and uh, the University of Ottawa Faculty of Ed is going to give you the information about how to, um, how to teach, which is a, is a different thing than knowing about a particular curriculum area. And, and so you need to be competent in, in both the curriculum, the subject area, as well as the pedagogy or how you teach things to young people. 
and uh, along with that, you have to uh, learn about managing uh, students. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, five-year-old kindergarten kids have have their distinct uh, characteristics, and sixteen-year-old uh, uh, teenagers have uh, certain uh, needs, and uh, you have to be able to. Uh, balance the teaching part with the managing of the behavior so that students can learn. And, and so you have to be consistent with your justice. You are going to be in charge of a classroom and, and you need to uh, manage that classroom so that uh, all students in the room can have the opportunity for an education. Uh, you have to be aware of, and this has been a, a, a growing uh, responsibility of teachers over the past few years, you have to be aware of your students' well-being at all times. Uh, we live in a complicated world and students, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, come with uh, various um, life circumstances that uh, may be difficult for them to deal with at, at any particular moment. They might be short-term or they might be long-term uh, challenges that they're facing, um, but you need to be attuned to what what your students are feeling. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to be a social worker as well, but you need to be able to guide them to an appropriate resource if they're struggling in, in some particular area. Um, and that may be another colleague in your building, like a guidance counselor, or, or it may be to um, some social service uh, agency that uh, interacts with your school uh, or your administration may be able to help but uh, you certainly need to be attuned to your students' uh, health and wellness. And then finally, you're responsible to maintain confidentiality for your students at all times. And that, that's critical, especially, well, it's, it's critical in every school setting, um, but like a school like myself, in a community like where I, I'm from, Sturgeon Falls, very small community, 6,000 people. Outside of school, everybody knows me. Inside of school, everybody knows me, and I know most members of our community. And uh, so you have to be careful about, you know, having a conversation in the grocery store or uh, uh, chatting with a colleague at a restaurant or something. You always need to be uh, um, aware uh, of uh, students' right to confidentiality about their circumstances and their education. Um, so the next slide's about our uh, responsibilities uh, towards the Federation. and. Uh, uh, a member shall cooperate with the Federation and that that's the Ontario Teachers Federation, but also our FLIR affiliate members which and you will be a member of one of them eventually if you're hired in the public uh, public of uh, publicly funded education system. Um, so both OTF and, and the affiliate uh, federations uh, expect you to promote the welfare of the profession at all times and support their <clears throat> their goals in uh, achieving uh, a strong uh, teaching profession and protecting uh, the rights and uh, the rights of the membership. Um, <clears throat> duties to uh, fellow members. This is uh, an important piece and it's actually, uh, you know, a legislative piece. We didn't just invent this to, to make you feel like you have to um, do certain things. This, this, is, this is through legislation and it's critical that uh, um, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't intervene uh, towards a colleague or fellow member in their classroom um, unless, it's, unless it's a warranted intervention. So you, you may not agree with someone, uh, how someone manages their classroom, but you shouldn't be bursting in there and, and, and uh, intervening. Uh, for for relatively minor circumstances. Um, there are times when it's appropriate to intervene. Uh, we suggest you do that on a one-on-one -on -one basis with a colleague first, uh, whether that's uh, you know a, a, just a, a quiet conversation in, in the staff room or in your office um, or after class or so on. Um, but some circumstances warrant you because ultimately you need to protect students' welfare and well-being. And uh, you, you may need to uh, um, report behavior by a fellow uh, colleague, teacher colleague, that uh, uh, you, you deem uh, difficult to uh, 
help me out, Lindy. Difficult to, uh, <laughs> I, I'm fumbling, I'm looking at the chat box, it's distracting. Uh, <laughs> I, have to, I have to unmute myself to help you out, Parker. Um, yeah, I think that if you see another teacher doing something that disturbs you, and that you think is not what they should be doing. And that can happen, especially when you're a teacher candidate, because you're actually in classrooms with other teachers. And so you're observing teachers doing a lot of stuff. So the question often comes up of whether you can make a negative report, an adverse report about a colleague. And the answer is that you can do that. But Parker's gonna tell you what you have to do if you make a negative report about yeah. another colleague. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lindy. Little, uh, little distracted there. Sorry, folks. Um, yeah. So, if if you feel a need to make a, an adverse report to uh, your administration or another uh, um, education stakeholder body, it's important that you uh, recognize that you have a responsibility to notify the person you're reporting on within a 72-hour period. Uh, that you've made an adverse report and you have to give them enough detail about the report that they are aware of what you're speaking of uh, and it has to be in writing. Um, there are a couple of exceptions to that. Well, uh, one significant, significant exception to that. If, if you suspect uh, sexual abuse by a colleague, uh, you need to report that obviously and you're not required to um, uh, give them a notification that you've made that report. Uh, so you would typically make that, uh, that report to the Children's Aid Society and or the police. Uh, you should also keep your administrator informed on any adverse report, uh, but you are not in that circumstance required to notify your, uh, your colleague uh, for various reasons. So it, it, it's important that you do your best to maintain professionalism with your colleagues but if you see something that is hurting students, you, you, you should intervene. Most circumstances, you need to notify the person that you've, you've uh, reported uh, something you, you are worried about, uh, except again for the sexual abuse uh, circumstance when, when you don't, you, you need to report that, but you don't need to notify uh, the person you've made the report on. Parker, Sarah Day is asking um, for an example of some things that you might report another teacher on. I really hope that people are not in a circumstance where they're having to report on their fellow teachers. But the example I usually use is, let's say you're walking by a classroom and you see a teacher grabbing a student really hard. Actually, when I present in person, I actually get one of the teacher candidates to grab onto my arm really hard and they're always very uh, shy to do that. But let's just say you see that kind of an interaction in a teacher and a student and you think there's a problem with that and you feel like that's not a correct way to handle students, you feel like you wanna make a report about it. Um, so that's an example of something. But the reason why we require you to let the teacher know that you're making that negative report is exactly because you don't have the context of what was just happening. So let's say that that student was about to harm another student and the teacher intervened by grabbing the student. Let's say the student was about to harm him or herself or was about to harm the teacher. There are many reasons why that would have been an appropriate reaction by the teacher. And you need to let the teacher know so that at least they can provide um, that information. So I see that Tracy is saying that there'll be lots of opportunities to discuss uh, these matters throughout your, uh, your preparation at the faculty. And, um, but on oh. sexual abuse, yeah, exactly as uh, Sarah, as Mira is saying, but sexual abuse, any suspicion, suspicion of sexual abuse, you must report right away and you do not have to inform the colleague. Yeah, and, and uh, I believe you're getting the boundaries presentation later this morning. And, and that will be uh, much more in depth about, uh, about your responsibilities in this, in this area. So, so we're just giving you sort of a lead in to, to what you're gonna learn in your boundaries presentation from I believe this year, uh, the uh, ETFO, ETFO uh, Federation is, is giving you uh, that presentation. Um, so it's, it's, we're nearing the end here and I think uh, uh, it's important to realize you get lots of, uh, lots of benefits from being a member of the Federation, but you do have some responsibilities. So I've, I saw this picture on, on, uh, online and asked Lindy to add it into the, into the slide deck here. Uh, it, it's sort of, uh, 
this is how you will feel about <laughs> as you are entering the profession and, and throughout your career. You are juggling uh, a lot of different things for a lot of different people uh, all the time. And, and I have to say, uh, with experience, it does get a little bit easier, but there will be days where you feel overwhelmed. And it's important that uh, you recognize those days will come and, and you need to reach out for supports where they're available. And, and certainly the Federation, all the federations have supports in place. Most school boards have supports for teachers. But in my experience, your best uh, avenue to get help when you're, when you're struggling with uh, something in teaching is from your colleagues. Um, both, both new and, and older colleagues provide a lot of important, can provide you with a lot of important information that can get you through some difficult circumstances, whether, and uh, there's some examples there on the slide, uh, you know, you're trying to come up with lessons for a wide range of student needs and abilities, and your school board's asking you to do all kinds of things, and the Ministry of Education has expectations, and so on. All of those um, all of those pressures can sometimes uh, uh, be frustrating and overwhelming, but uh, colleagues often have, have figured out a way to work through some of the problems and, and, and people will come to you for help sometimes and you will need to go to them for help for sometimes. And I encourage you to do that. Finally, I think the, if you, you take nothing else from this uh, presentation, it's important that um, you recognize this particular, what this particular quote is emphasizing, uh, Samuel Nadal uh, quote, uh, teachers teach someone something, and it's in that order. You're teaching people, <laughs> human beings, and, and, and that might seem like a, yeah, of course, kind of statement, uh, but sometimes we get sort of lost in curriculum or in standardized testing or whatever, you always need to refocus yourself and, it, and remember that you are teaching young people for the most part. Maybe you'll teach adult learners, I'm not sure, but uh, for the most part, you're teaching young people and, uh, and they're people and they come with their, uh, uh, their life circumstances and, and they come to you with different abilities and different levels and uh, you must, must remember that. So please remember you teaching, you're teaching a person first and then you're trying to teach them the things that you are passionate about, whether that's math or music or whatever. But uh, remember, it's the person first. So I, th I think that's near the end. And I don't know if we'll have a couple minutes here for some questions, uh, Tracy, but uh, um, we're certainly open I, to that. I, I really want to thank you, uh, Lindy and Parker, uh, for your incredible presentation today. Uh, a good over great overview of OTF and what, you, what is uh, available for our teacher candidates. A lot of the things that you brought up are things that are dilemmas in education and there are no one right answer because we have to look at the context. Um, Dwayne provided a, a good uh, understanding or clarification for some of, uh, some of our teacher candidates and certainly in our next presentation, um, these matters will be discussed a little bit further. Uh, thank you ag again for the time where you've um, recorded the session. If there are questions, um, we will collect them and uh, try to answer them for our candidates, but also reach out to both of you. We wish you all the best, stay safe and healthy. And um, for our teacher candidates, we'll give you a few minutes to just get up and stretch. And our next presentation will start at 10.05. So have a great day and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Tracy, I have put the links into the chat box, but I will also send you an email. So if you would like to send those out, you can as well. Yes, and, and on our Brightspace, we'll include a summary, we'll include the recording of this session and uh, a summary of what was in the chat so that people have that information. So uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming, great to see you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah, very nice to be with everybody today. Good luck in your teaching uh, journey. <laughs> <laughs>